Well, there's a time and place for everything, and the time has come for us to take a, a look inside this guitar. This is my sort of wolfy strap thing that we got going on. Um, it has some some features of its own, but let's just flip it flip it upside down and start talking about it with you. So um, what we have here is it was actually a pretty hurried wire job. I probably should have you know, used a little more heat shrink on some of these items. But we basically have two things to accomplish today. Uh, the first being, I'd like to change this pickup out. It's, um, it's a vintage SDS-1, but there's something up with it. And the output is super low. And so we're just gonna start, this is how you have to start every guitar project. And I know, it's just so intimidating, and you're not going to want to do it, but you have to snip something. It's just the first step. Once I've cut something out, um, I know it sounds crazy, but I am really serious. I think snipping something will really jumpstart your desire to uh, finish this project. Because once you've snipped something, there's you know, no going back. You kind of got to start what you finished. So... Um, that's good now. I can't believe I didn't zip tie these pickups in. Hmm. Well, let's start here. Let's unscrew this neck pickup, and then we're going to get into what you all came for, which was the install of the buffer. But in the meantime, we can talk about some of the changes that have been made to the buffer line. Um, you'll notice that today I'm going to put in a, a Spud G1. This is um, modeled after the buffer that was in uh, Rosebud, as well as the same buffer was in Wolf in 1989 um, and, and beyond. And basically, it seems to be, based on our understanding of the timeline, uh, our meaning Waldo's and then me just kind of <laughs> saying yes, Waldo, I agree. <laughs> uh, based on our understanding of the timeline, this seems to be the answer to the pickup change that happened in July of 1988. So Tiger was using a, um, a Tiger buffer, as we know, and um, Jerry changed pickups in July of 1988 from Super 2s, which he had been using for uh, what, six years at that point, I think? Um, from Super 2s back to dual sounds or super distortions, same pickup, just uh, the dual sounds are sold with a switch. That's the only difference. But uh, he switches back to dual sounds, still keeping the, the splits that he had with Tiger. Um, but the buffer, it's now he has a different voicing of his pickups, so they need to change the buffer to where the input impedance is uh, correctly you know, matched up with these pickups. And so that's what they did here. And this new buffer series uh, features screw block terminals so that we can just put our wires in and screw them down. But even though we have screw terminals here, um, there's not really screw terminals in the guitar for <laughs> putting these buffers in yet. So I'm gonna show you this is, you know, as hopefully the most in-depth detail on a insides of a Jerry guitar so far, and hope to make many more. Um, but let's talk about what we have going on in here, because there is a lot, and I want it to make sense to everybody. So, a Jerry modded Strat, as I like to call him, is just putting, you know, the, the features that he had, which was a an oval toggle onboard effects loop, coil splits, um, and then my other switches are just extra features. They're not true to Jerry's schematics. Um, but you gotta put all this in a strat and it's a pretty tight cavity. So you may have noticed I've routed out a lot of extra room in here. This is, um, you know, so much extra room to put a buffer and let it just kind of hang out there. Um, now the cool thing is that we get to swap this buffer out and we don't have to do much else. I just have to put in a, a new neck pickup. And the buffer is gonna have, you can kind of think of it in, in 
two different stages. It has a ascend and return, and then it has a, a ground and a, a power. So you need to get power to the buffer in order for it to work. So you'll see here I have, um, forgive my, my very crude gaff tape. I, I don't work this uncleanly on customer guitars, but this was literally five hours before a show. So I think I was just being a little sloppy. Um, but yeah, this, this red wire right here runs back to the battery um, in the control cavity or in the, in the battery box on the back. Um, this right here, these wires are yellow and blue, which are not buffer wires, even though the buffer uses the same color codes. The yellow and blue that are going to the output plate are your send and return um, for your oval. This wire right here that you can see is black. It should be yellow, but I think I had to run an extension. Um, that is the out from the buffer. So the out, it goes from your Let's talk about it. Pickups. We've said this in other videos, but I want to do it again. Pickups into your switch, out of your switch, into the buffer. So this white wire should be blue. This black wire should be yellow. I had to add on extensions. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about there. Um, so that should be yellow. That should be blue pickups into the switch, out of the switch, into your buffer, out of the buffer, into the switch. It goes right there on that center lug. Now, depending on which way your switch is flipped, it's either going to bypass and go directly to the volume pot, just like a normal guitar would, or it's going to do this little loop here. So it'll send all the way out to your tip of your TRS jack gonna go through your pedals return through the ring of that TRS jack come back here now it's on this side and then it goes to your volume pot and from your volume pot takes this wire white wire to the output and goes to your amplifier so that is the the Jerry schematic signal flow now you have two capacitors um, no sorry two tone pots but three capacitors uh, this is a stacked tone pot so that each capacitor is dealing with all the same resistance. There's no shared resistances across tone pots. Um, those are in parallel with your with your input. Would it be your input? Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is preserve most of what we have going on here. Um, we need to take this out. So I, I did an interesting mounting system. A lot of people will ask me, if I have any preferred mounting system, and it's really up to you. Like, I would never recommend somebody put staples in their guitar to hold a buffer down. I think that's so silly, but I, uh, I clearly did that. <laughs> I already have all the wires run, so I'm just going to clip them here. This is something you could do if you already had a buffer installed on your guitar. Um, so let's let's go about it, though, if I, if I were to change out these. Uh, I would desolder this one i would put yellow going here from the buffer to the middle lug bottom lug of that dual dpdt switch right here um i would put the blue right here on this five way and then from there um you put your red you have to feed your red back to um, a battery harness terminal for demonstration purposes. This is what one of those looks like. That's just hanging out back there in a battery box. But I am just going to use the existing wires that I have conveniently run and we're going to snip them. We're going to start. Here we go. Gosh, it's scary doing that, isn't it? Now here, we have a spud, one buffer. This is how I used to mount them. Wrap them up in a parts bag, put dual lock on them. So this is going to be a really simple um, installation, given that I don't have to solder or anything. I'm going to strip all these wires. Okay, 
so once you've run your wires to the various places, you want to ground your ground to the main ground bus. Um, we're just going to install them in the screw terminals. Now, I'm kind of working with some slightly not ideal wire lengths. I don't have as much slack as I'd like to, but we're going to make it happen. Let's organize them in the order they need to be. We have out, in, ground, and 9 volt. I think I actually have them. Sweet. We're gonna start with two at a time because <laughs> this is this is a struggle. All right, we're gonna start with these two. A small flathead screwdriver. All right, that one's in. There we go. I'm going to create a little more room for myself under this heat shrink. All right, look at that. Now our buffer is good to go. Um, what I want to do is figure out a nice way to mount it. I really recommend people use dual lock. I mean, when I say this, it's like a heavy duty Velcro, 3M dual lock. If you're watching this video, you probably know, know what it is already. But, uh, now this one, I, I did used to wrap my buffers in parts bags, but since I know where this one is sitting in the control cavity, I'm actually just gonna stick this dual off right on the back. Um, now, I don't know if I recommend people put their buffers in totally uninsulated, but I do think um, if you know but it's not going to be at risk of touching anything. That's safe to do. Uh, I just, yeah. You know, I like people to wire their guitars in ways that are going to make them last the longest. So that's it, guys. That's the whole buffer. Uh, I did I did forget that I need to put a new neck pickup in. So we're going to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's the buffer installation. And hilariously, as I was wrapping up the buffer demonstration, I forgot that we're trying to change out our pickup. So this right here is a vintage SDS-1. Didn't sound very good. Um, I don't know what was up with it, but there was just something, the output wasn't quite, quite right. So we're gonna fix that today, putting in a, a semi new SDS-1. And uh, I think I, I was kind of under the impression that, that this would be a more involved video. But I do realize that it's mostly about understanding the signal flow of these guitars. And so the more I can hammer that down over and over again by, by explaining pickup, switch, switch, buffer, buffer, bypass switch, bypass switch either to the TRS or bypassed to the volume pot to the out. Like the more I can just drill that for you guys, uh, the better you all will be at building your own circuits. Um, I am struggling today with this. I remember I asked Waldo once, I said, hey, it's like, is there any tips? It's like, you, you gotta know something that I don't. Are there any tips on um, how to install pickup screws with those, those springs without just going crazy? Because I do it the old fashioned way. And I was like, what's that? Because I'm like, damn, he must know something. And he goes, yeah, old fashioned way. He said, uh, screaming and <laughs> screaming and yelling. <laughs> Frustration, screaming and yelling. It's a thing, man. It's real. Uh, and I am 
experiencing it now. There we go. Did I get it? Finally? Nope. Motherfucker. This is the kind of block that I think is the hardest part about just getting to a project. Because you know sometimes it just takes this amount away. But look, second attempt, totally fine. So, just gotta keep going at it. When discouraged, try again. Yada yada. Um... Nice, so this is going well. This is pretty rough and sloppy work. This is not, um, we're not in Jay's uh, wire organization tutorial course yet. I'm not qualified to teach that. One day when I work on my own guitars uh, and keep them cleaner, then I'll be able to teach you guys. This one's not bad. It's really not horrible, it's just there's a couple things, like I would have liked to have organized these pickups, uh, zip tied them a little bit, but I didn't end up doing that, so it is what it is. Cool, have the pickup in, that's nice. Now we have to solder it. And since I was just saying I wished I did more wire organization, I'm gonna do a lazy, don't do this, um, but a very lazy twist. And then pull that in here strip the, these wires. They should be the thinnest gauge. There we go. I'm going to tin both of those real quick. Turn on our solder fans. So we know where the ground is going. I'm going to kind of put it there in a way that it holds itself. And then we'll solder hot. To, uh, we can actually just solder hot probably in now. So I want to make a point about kind of how I'm approaching this guitar versus how I would approach one from the ground up. This is one of my personal guitars and it's one of my player guitars in the sense that you know it gets it gets used i built this i bought a relic guitar specifically so i could start modding a guitar with no fear so things that i'm gonna do like here i'm gonna put in this this white pickup thing the pickup lead from the top which i really don't like doing because the rest of them are from the bottom. Now, why would I do that? Well, I'm repairing something. I'm making modifications. Why did I decide to clip the leads here on all these wires? Well, I've already run the wires. Um, there's sort of an art to some of the things you'll do in repair. And obviously keeping cleanliness in mind is amazing and you should certainly do that, but not every day gives you the opportunity to build super cleanly from the ground up. So, you know, sometimes you gotta, this one, I was just gonna melt it. Basically, I'm playing a game of, is this gonna be worth it for me if I decide to go in and I start burning this heat shrink on the capacitor and then I bend the, the wire lead a bunch because I'm trying to manipulate it from the wrong angle. Maybe I could have bent, bent that tab up uh, and come at it then, but then you're, you know, weakening the integrity of that tab. So there is an art. That is all. I don't know why I was breathing so heavily trying to say that for you guys. Okay, now we need to solder this baby. <laughs> Isn't it wild that it's that simple? Look at that. Ground's not going anywhere. Totally soldered, our new buffer in place. Now we can put this thing back together. How fun. I'm really excited to try this out. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, thank you. Would love to have your continued support as we make more videos like this. Um, it's really fun for me. I love knowing that people out there 
are doing this kind of stuff and are interested in it in the same way that I've been interested in it for years now. And uh, just a blast. All right, so obviously you gotta test that out. And I'll try to include some tests as part of this video, but as of filming this, I don't know if it works or not. So one thing I wanna note for everybody, don't do what I'm doing and put your screws all back in before you've tested out if your thing works. It's not worth it. You know, it doesn't happen anymore for me, but the day that you get too cocky is the day that it happens. So I always try to just put minimal amounts of screws in just to hold the electronics. Um, you can kind of make a bet based on how lucky you're feeling that day. If you want to screw all the all the screws in because you're that confident in your work, then be my guest. I'm not stopping you. But uh, the times that I've done that are the times that I've been the most disappointed. Let's just say that. All right, cool. So we have two screws in here, two screws in here, holding it. Output jack I didn't do anything with. So it's time to test. All right, now, uh, before I put strings on this, this is how I test my pickups. You want to have it in oval bypass mode because I don't have oval hooked up. I'm assuming that my oval wiring still works. Um, oh, don't mind that crazy sound. I think that's a good sign. I think that means we're getting signal. Um, so we're going to try the bridge pickup. Just do a tap test. Turn up that volume. Yay, play with our tone real quick. Yep, awesome. Cool, bridge pickup works, middle pickup. Middle pickup tone works, awesome. Yay, let's try that neck position. Awesome. All right, guitar works. How fabulous. Stay tuned for a spud, um, spud, stay tuned for a spud JG1 demo. And, uh, yeah. Stay tuned for a spud JG1 demo. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 